Secretary, please note the arrival of uh, Councilwoman Liebert. Uh, are there uh, questions from uh, any of the members of Community Improvement Corporation? Mr. Osborne. Is there any preliminary, uh, I guess it's the same footprint as the previous designs, I'm guessing. Um, can you kind of highlight where the buildings will be in conjunction with that, that image? Yes. Um, what, first of all, we have, we have several concept designs. Uh, we put out a request for proposal. We spoke to three separate architectural firms um, and, and, and really got a lot of input from, from folks in the community as far as you know, uh, the design community, if you will, of what could be done. Um, and answer your question about is it going to be the same footprint, you know, pretty much the, the, the project will probably extend along the perimeter of the, of the, of the site almost because it has to. Uh, right now, our most recent plan, we're probably thinking about two buildings and potentially a U-shaped building in order to give as much of a face towards East Loveland Avenue as possible. Uh, we think that, that connectivity and the idea of creating gathering spaces and uh, outside dining um, really is most important along <coughs> East Loveland Avenue and along the railroad. In many old railroad towns, um, the, the railroad, the rail line is almost like a main street. And so we'd like to orient as much of the retail as possible along both the railroad lines and uh, East Loveland Avenue. Did that answer your question? Other questions? Mayor Weisberg. Uh, I'm trying to think how to word it. So from your perspective, and I know you've been working a lot of negotiations, what do you see as some of the biggest risks to making this uh, development happen in a timely manner? Um, Maybe that's not a fair, real fair question. It's but a great question. I'm glad you asked it, and I didn't plug it, but I will tell you, to be very candid, this type of project takes an enormous commitment from both public and private resources. And um, I don't want to spend two years of my life and millions of dollars to play politics. And to be completely honest with you, that's what scares me the most of this project. I mean, I know how to do what it takes to do this. We have done it many, many times before. And uh, in order to be successful, it needs a united council. Okay, it needs a united staff. It needs an empowered staff. Um, you know, the, the, these are complicated projects. Uh, you know, they're not. It's not brain surgery. I mean, you know, if you've done them before, you know how to do them. But they are complicated. There's many issues that are going to come up that we can't begin to address in a development agreement because you, you just don't know what you're going to face. But um, you know, we are we are as an organization, we are very transparent. Uh, we're going to tell you exactly what we think uh, as it comes up and, and, and give you our opinions. We're professionals. We've done it for a long time. But we really need a commitment from, from the city and a commitment from the staff that we're all going to move in the same direction. That's why I think it really starts with a cohesive vision. You know, when I talk about a cohesive vision, I also talk about um, <clears throat> careful communication. You know, it's very important when you present you know, a, an infill downtown visible project like this, that it be communicated appropriately and, and, and clearly and concisely and, 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 and largely with one voice. So I hope that answered the question. Thank you, uh, thank you for the candid response. I, I'm, I'm very hopeful that the uh, Community Improvement Corporation, you know, based on the um, extreme importance of this project and the, and the lasting impact it will have on this community for generations will act accordingly and, and do what is in the best interest of all the residents and their descendants moving forward. Uh, Vice Mayor Bittenhardt. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Cohen, what, is the, what are the similarities between what you see this project developing into between this and the Riverwalk and what are the dissimilarities that will make this project unique to Loveland? I think the, the most similarities are the fact that we're taking advantage of pedestrian-friendly community on a bike trail 
and a river. And that is an incredibly attractive combination of features that very, very few communities have. Both Milford and Loveland have those features. Now, the differences are the architecture of the downtowns. While they were built over similar periods of time, the architecture is, is relatively different between downtown Milford and downtown Loveland. And our design professionals are going to work you know, with, with what exists in Loveland and try to enhance that. Uh, Loveland, in my opinion, desperately needs more retail. And uh, Milford has a long, in what long? I mean, you know, four or five block strip of retail merchants. And, you know, since Riverwalk was announced and, and started, the vacancies in downtown Milford have filled up. Uh, you know, in that, in, that, in that four or five block portion of Old Milford, I don't know that there's a vacancy today. Uh, it's very, very healthy. Uh, you know, when you, when you make this type of an investment in a small community and bring in hundreds of, of, of relatively high income uh, residents to the downtown, it does have a big, big in impact on, 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 on retail and restaurants and, and, and the community. So, um, you know, I think they both have unique architectural features that need to be um, incorporated into the uh, development but the natural resources that are available in both are uncannily similar. You, you mentioned, um, and I'm going to paraphrase a little bit, so if I don't say it quite right, please correct me, but I think you said that you, your intention is to um, complement the existing historic structures in Loveland and uh, to, to rim the, uh, the streets um, and uh, and also orient somewhat to the to the railroad. Um, is, is it safe to assume then that the facades will be double sided so that regardless of, of how you're approaching the development, you're going to see um, so you're going to see something similar as opposed to a, a blank wall. And uh, and and it, is it also safe to assume that that would also encourage some uh, some some of that out, outdoor seating that, that we have become accustomed to on that uh, on that strip. You said it almost right. Um, I don't think there's a lot of historic structures in Loveland. So what I think I said meant to say is that we're going to play up the history of the railroad, which I think is an important feature. Um, you know, one historic structure is the train depot, which is also beautiful. And you know, in our preliminary designs, we are using a lot of that terracotta roof on awnings and, and shelters and overhangs in the facades of our development to try to tie that together. Um, as far as the the visibility, as you're coming, you know, the most important view is as you're coming down uh, East Loveland Avenue and you approach the site. You know, we want to have a mass of retail facing the street that you see as you drive in that attracts the attention, and we want an anchor, probably restaurant, right there that will want to have al fresco dining along the along the tracks and and, and, and play up that feel. Um, they will be, you know, th this side of the buildings down here, which will uh, look that way. Will be double facade. You're not gonna you're not gonna look at the backs of a building per se. But I also think the way we're talking about designing this is as you come down East Loveland Avenue, you're really not gonna see much of the parking field because we're gonna have this um, the, the, this retail structure right at the the interchange there between. I, I can't reach it, but and I don't think I can point. Does this does this light up? Yeah, there's a black one in the middle. Oh, look at that. Okay. okay, so what I expect to happen is as you're coming uh, this direction on East Loveland Avenue and you're looking across here, what we're expecting to have is a large facade here that will be the retail facing out that way. So the space between um, the train depot and this won't give you much, of, much visibility coming through here. But in spite of that, we're going to make both sides of all the building, all sides of the building, because it is right smack dab in the, in, in the center of town. So, so they'll both be uh, uh, very attractive facades. Excellent.
cook with gas. Yeah, we are. <laughs>